Welcome to the Open Door Spiritualist Sanctuary in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. This is Deborah Skelton speaking to you on behalf of the community of the Open Door Sanctuary and for our ministers, Reverends Brian Robertson and Simon James. In this series of podcasts, we are pleased to be able to share with you our friends and fellow spiritualists worldwide. Some of our thoughts, philosophy, teachings and writings from those of our ancestors upon whose shoulders we now stand. In the early half of the 20th century, a British journalist by the name of Paul Miller found himself both witness to and investigating some of the era's most astonishing spirit and psychic phenomena. Here, he discusses the nature and purpose of spiritualism as he sees it. Paul Miller Spiritualism is true in peace and in war, in good times and in bad, in the darkness of the night and in the bright light of day. It arises not from any desire of any group of people on this earth to foist a new cult on the world, but because there is a plan in the world of spirit to regenerate our lives. It is not done by magic, but by the steady presentation of ideas, sometimes consciously, sometimes in the silence of inspiration, but always at work. The phenomena of spiritualism are only a small part of the whole. The method is old because men do not change much in their ways. It is spirit ideas that count, the value and stress that spirit guides give to life that matters most. So, from table wrappings to spirit photographs, from the discovery of lost languages to the healing of the sick, this work is done. Yet, it is not all, for the greatest part is to set free the mind of man. That is the great task before which all else is small, dear though it may be to all of us, to find again the touch of the hand we loved and to hear again those accents we enjoyed. I cannot describe anything as a miracle because there can be no miracles in a world of law and order. What is done is done because force moves at the behest of law, and law can be perceived by intelligence and employed. By becoming devotees of nature's methods, we can imitate her actions, speed them up, vary them, and learn of laws within laws, of subtler and subtler forces until we perceive the great unfolding glory of natural science, and learn of the endless range of faculties in the human consciousness and employ them for beneficent purposes. The deeps and heights of that consciousness have not been pierced by any man. As we grow, the truth we know pales before the truth we are learning. As we evolve, the world around us is unfolding before our perception. Vision is not all. Perception and awareness are more. For in the realms where the eyes cannot see, the mind can perceive, the soul can imbibe, and the spirit can express the life that pulsates through the universe. There is no religion, there is no system of philosophy that has given to man as noble a concept of his origin and his destiny as spiritualism. There is no formulated creed superior to the teaching of the spirit which is living, therefore can be checked against experience, compared with others, referred to again and again. Its agents can be questioned, examined on facts, and confronted in the event of failure. Spiritualism has given a new dignity to man which is denied him in the orthodox religions. It has endowed the seeker with an assurance and a measure of certainty not to be found in the minds of those who give their allegiance to the purely materialist philosophy of life. It has never been claimed by any rational spiritualist that a complete philosophy has been formulated that will take the place of independent thinking. That precious gift of the spirit must never be taken from man. It is the one safeguard he has against the terrible affliction of creeds and dogmas. The independent mind is as much a spiritual gift as clairvoyance, clairaudience, the direct voice, levitation, or automatic writing. Without the clear action of the well-informed mind, there is no safety in this world. Without the constant action of the mind upon facts, there is no means of testing all the statements made in this world and the next. The purpose of spiritualism is mainly to liberate the whole force of the soul that it may be fully expressed in life here or hereafter. It is not the aim that every word that is uttered in the seance room or every idea received in the silence of the communing mind should be taken as the perfect statement of an infallible God. Always, from the beginning, 
It has been demonstrated that, in addition to the priceless knowledge that there is continuing life beyond the grave, there is a band of reasonable men and women who are the chief instruments in giving teaching, providing evidence, and finding and guiding the mediums who are their representatives in this world. Thank you for joining us. This is Deborah Skelton on behalf of the entire community of the Open Door Spiritualist Sanctuary here in Victoria, Canada. We wish you well and hope that you will join us once again for our next podcast. Thank you for listening.